Okay. So, okay. So, good day everyone. Okay. So, my, my topic for today is all about motivation from concepts to applications. So, in the chapter before this, we've discussed about the concepts or the motivational concepts. But in, the, in this chapter, we'll try to apply the concepts so that we can motivate our people. So, the first one is motivating by job design. What is job design? Job design encompasses the components of the task and the interaction pattern among the employees with the intent to satisfy both the organizational needs and the social needs of the job holder. So in the job design, you will know what your tasks are, how will you interact with your co-employees, and how does your job satisfy the organizational needs. So that is job design. We can motivate our people through the job design. So we have the JCM or the job characteristics model. This one is developed by J. Richard Hackman and George Oldham. It has five core dimensions. The first one is skill variety. It is a degree to which a job requires a variety of different activities so the worker can use a number of different skills and talents. So when you mean job variety, um, in your job, you're doing different activities. So for example, uh, since I'm a teacher, uh, I think that teaching has a lot of uh, skill varieties in it. So the first one is we do a lesson plan. So we do planning of our lessons on a weekly or a daily basis. And then we deliver okay, what we have planned. We teach the children. And then after that, we assess them. No? We, make, um, we make exams, quizzes, and all that. And after that, we give them grades. Okay, so there's a variety of tasks or skills. So if a job has more variety in it, then uh, it's more motivating for other people. But let's say, for example, uh, you work in a company where you just, um, you're, you're a cashier. You know? So there's no such variety in your job. What you do is just, you just uh, punch all those stuff that the people buy. So there's no such, so much variety in the job. Okay, so that's skill variety. Next one is the task identity. It is the degree to which a job requires completion of a whole and identifiable piece of work. So what is your task really in your work? Okay. So task identity means how do I help the company as a whole? Okay. So you know what your job is and you know how your job can help the company. Okay. You're not lost while you're doing your job. Okay. So for example, uh, we'll go back to the cashier. The task identity there is that uh, they help the company by, um, you know, uh, through sales. No? So they they process what the company is sold. So that is their task identity. Okay. Next one is the task significance. The degree to which the job affects the lives or the work of other people. Is my job significant? Will I make an impact to the other people? So again, as a teacher, I believe that um, I make a significance, okay? There is a job significance in my job because uh, when I'm able to teach other people then, and they're able to learn as well, they have learned something from me. I believe that I have affected or touched their lives. Okay, so that's the task 
significance. If you have a high task significance in your job, then you are also motivated. Okay? But let's say, for example, uh, you are just a... No, it's not just a... You are a cashier in the company. In... In... Um, in a comp in a in a grocery store okay so sometimes you do not feel such significance why because uh, you're just punching the items and then you collect the money so you don't feel so much of a significance okay but i'm it's not it's not that i'm belittling those people but sometimes okay but for now since they are uh, one of the frontliners I believe that they also have, uh, they believe, and I believe that their lives now has a significance since they're part of the frontliners team. Okay. Number four is the autonomy. Autonomy is the degree to which a job provides the worker freedom, independence, and discretion in scheduling work and determining the procedure in carrying it out. So autonomy is that you're free, no? Uh, you can make decisions by yourself. Your manager does, is not always by your side to say do this and do that. But you go to work and then you know what you, you're doing. So you're free so long as you're meeting the deadlines and everything. So if you have high autonomy, if you believe that uh, you can work by yourself, then you're also highly motivated. But if the autonomy is low, like for example, your supervisor or your manager is always there by your side, then the autonomy is low, therefore the motivational factor is also low. Next one is feedback. Feedback is a degree to which carrying out a work activities generates clear and direct information about your own performance. So sometimes we want feedback. How how did I do my job? Did I do it well? Was it just average? Or was I not able to perform well? So I believe that in the task uh, of teaching, I get feedback from my students. Okay, they tell you if uh, they don't understand the topic and you can discuss more. Or sometimes, even though they won't tell you because they're ashamed, um, you will see that in their quizzes or examinations when they get low grades. So that is a form of a feedback. So when you receive feedback from your um, clients, then you will be motivated to, to do your job because you know if, if they love you for your job and so on and so forth. Okay, so those are the five core dimensions. So, how do we use these five core dimensions? As I told you, the higher the score for these five core dimensions, meaning the higher is the motivation of the employees. Okay? So, we have here the MPS or the motivating potential score, wherein um, we have a formula. Okay? Which is skill variety plus task identity plus task significance over 3 multiplied by autonomy and feedback. And when you get a high score, it means that you are uh, motivated. Okay, Your employees are motivated. So when all of these three are high in a certain job, then the motivation is also high. Okay. Now, the question is how do we motivate our employees by applying the JCM concept because uh, that's the real challenge for every job because most employees resign because they're not motivated okay so how do we keep our employees and keep them motivated so job redesign we have here things on what to do job rotation okay. job rotation is also called cross training it is the periodic shifting of an employee from one task to another with similar skill requirements at the same organizational level. 
So, when you say job rotation, uh, ililipat ka sa ibang trabaho, but in the same position. So that you will not be bored with what you are doing. Okay. So, for example, before you are an accounts payable accountant, they will put you into a different job. You will be an accounts receivable accountant. So, same position, but different yung ginagawa mo. Okay. So, that's job rotation. Maybe this is because you're motivated because you will learn another job. And, of course, you will have a new set of team. And another one is you will not be bored. Next, we have job enrichment. Job enrichment expands job by increasing the degree to which the worker controls the planning, execution, and evaluation of the work. I think uh, job enrichment includes job rotation and um, it means uh, they're giving you uh, more task. Okay. So let's say, for example, how can they enrich your job? So let's say, for example, you are a um, you're just the staff of a certain uh, team. But sometimes they ask you to check the work of your colleagues. Okay. Even though you're not their boss. So you, you, you get to uh, check the work of your team. So that is job enrichment because uh, they give you a new task and uh, you feel that you're of value okay, and all that. So guidelines for enriching a job. How can you enrich a job? Number one is, you see here, no? you can combine tasks. So if you combine tasks, this can touch skill variety. So you know you have more, uh, you know more jobs. You do more tasks. You also have task identity because uh, you know how your task affects the other people in your team. Okay, you can create natural work units. No? so for example, uh, you build a team, and uh, each of the members in the team has a different task. So, you know how your task affects the other people inside the team. And you can create task identity and task significance. Okay. Next, we have uh, establish, establish client relations. Okay. So, when you have a relationship with your clients, um, get to communicate with your clients. So, that's an additional skill variety. And uh, we also have autonomy, since you directly communicate with your clients, you can touch the client, your client's lives. No? And another one is feedback, means you know if your clients are satisfied or not because you have a relationship with them. Okay. Or you mingle with them, okay. you have direct contact with them. Okay. Expand job vertically. So, if you expand job vertically, you have what? Autonomy. And open feedback channels means there is also feedback. Okay, alternative work arrangements. So, some people uh, want to have alternative work arrangements so that they are motivated in their job and uh, they think that um, they are of value. That's why they can give them alternative work arrangements. The first one is flex time, or this is the flexible work time, wherein uh, they can go to work at any time, okay, which is, it means flex, no? So, for example, in this example, uh, if you look at the clock, flexible start time, you can start between 7 a.m. to 8, 9 a.m., okay? So, this means that uh, you're not late even though you go to work as late as 9 a.m. So, you have the leeway, two hours no, time to go to work. This is especially true for the people who uh, wake up late. They are not morning person. But they are, if they are morning person, then they go to work at 7. Okay. 
And if they go to work at 7 and they work, for example, um, 8 hours straight, they don't have lunch. So 7, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. So they can go home at 3. So that's the flexible stop time. So they can go, go as early as 7 and go home at 3. Now, if they want to have a lunch break from 12 to 1, so they go home, they go to work at 7 and they go home at 4 because they have a break at 12 to 1. But for example, if you woke up late, na, or you have um, an early appointment, then you can go to work at 9. So if you go to work at 9 and you have the lunch break, so 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can go to, you can go home at 6 p.m. Okay, so that's still 8 hours. So flex time means you have the liberty to start anytime from 7 to 9. And you also have the flexibility to stop or to go home anytime from 3 to 7. So long as you are in the office at the core time, which is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so long as you work 8 hours a day. That's flexi time or flexible work time. I've experienced this when I was with IBM. But with IBM, they are more flexible than this one. Okay. So we can go to work as early as 7 and we can come to work as late as 10 a.m. As long as we have no meetings. And of also, we can go home as early as we want, so long as we have met all the deadlines of our work. Okay. Next one is job sharing. I have not experienced this. So job sharing allows two or more individuals to split a traditional 40-hour a week job. So, for example, um, I am a manager and I'd like to work from 8 to 12. Okay, so I work from 8 to 12 and then I go home at 12. And I have another manager who's sharing a job with me and that manager works 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So, that is job sharing. So, we share the same job so that uh, we can uh, clock fewer hours. I clock four hours and he clocks, or he or she clocks four hours. So that's a total of eight hours. So we share the job, okay? The positive side of job sharing is that um, uh, two heads are better than, than one. Of course, uh, when um, he has an idea that I can use, then I'll use that idea. And if I have an idea that he can use, then he can use that idea. So we can share our ideas even though we were not together or meeting every day. No? So it's because we have the same job. So probably every week we can meet an hour, okay, or so. So sharing the job is very good. Okay, but the negative side is sometimes no, uh, it's difficult for two persons to work in at the same at the same job if they are not compatible because sometimes uh, this is how I do my job and he has or she has another uh, what do you call that idea in doing the job so there will be a conflict Next one is telecommuting. Telecommuting. I have experienced telecommuting and this is very nice. This is when you work at home at least two days a week on a computer linked to the employer's office. So what's important in telecommuting is you have a very good internet connection because you will be linked to your employer's office in, in order to work. Because you will use your employer's email address, not any other address, okay? 
So you have to be connected to the computer of the office or to the server of the office. So that's telecommuting. I tried this when I work with IBM. Uh, I work at home two days every week even though there's still no COVID or the coronavirus disease. But this became very popular now due to the coronavirus disease. Since we can't go out of our houses, we just work at home. Okay? Um, we do our meetings at home also and we have our um, very reliable internet connection and we have platforms such as Google Meet, Zoom, okay, mess Facebook Messenger, wherein we can virtually work at home. Okay. Another one is virtual office. Virtual office is working from home on a relatively permanent basis. So you don't really go to your work, you just work at home all the time. So that's the virtual office. One thing that's very uh, positive about telecommuting is um, you will save money. Okay? Because you will save transportation costs, you will save gas, okay? you will save time because you'll just take a bath and sit and work. Unlike if you go to an office, uh, you take a bath, you commute, you know, there's traffic and all. But the, the negative side of telecommuting is sometimes uh, you get disconnected with your office mates because you're not working in the same office space. Okay. It's very different when you're at the same office space and, you, and you're with them as opposed to you're working at home. Next one in um, motivating your employees, we have employee involvement. Okay. So we involve our employees. So it's a participative process that uses employees' input to increase their commitment to the organization's success. Examples of employee involvement programs, so we have two. We have the participative management and we have the representative management. The participative management subordinates share significant degree of decision making with their immediate superiors. So, for example, participative management, uh, you're hiring an employee. Okay. And uh, you interview that employee and you think you want that employee to be one of your staff. Okay. In participative management, you sometimes ask some of your employees to uh, join you in a part of the interview uh, for them to uh, also assess their new office mate or new colleague. So that's part of uh, participative uh, management. Okay. Another thing is uh, participative um, Management is when you're launching a new product and uh, you ask your employees to be the first to be able to evaluate that product. So there's a, de a certain degree of uh, decision-making power with uh, your that's being given to the subordinates. Next is representative uh, participation. They say participative management uh, has a low motivational um, impact. But I think it has some impact because um, your superiors ask for your opinion. That's why sometimes you feel that you're needed. So it has an impact on motivation. Representative participation is a system in which workers participate in organizational decision making through a small group of representative employees. Sorry, this should be E M P L O Y E S. Employees, not employees. Okay. So if you have a representative uh, participation, um, not all of the employees in the rank and file gets to participate with management but just a few of them for example you have three to five of them it's a small group they represent those employees in the rank and file 
okay when the bosses make decisions but this one has a very low motivational um, motivational impact why because not all of those employees tend to participate just a few okay next one so that affects more of the that affects more of the intrinsic okay so we go to the pay okay what to pay establishing a pay structure so when we say pay structure this is more of extrinsic okay so it's the process of initially setting pay levels entails balancing internal and external equity so internal equity the worth of the job to the organization so, when you set up a pay, hmm, what is the worth of this job to my organization? Siyempre, if it's a managerial position, it's a higher pay. If it's a lower position, it's a lower pay. So, that's the internal equity. Okay. External equity, okay, it's the external competitiveness of an organization's pay relative to pay elsewhere in the industry. So, for example, we have uh, two different schools, okay? External equity means if this school pays at around 200 pesos an hour, of course, if you have to set your pay, you have to be competitive with that school. So, you either set it at 200 also to be competitive or you add 10 pesos, 205, 210 to be competitive. So, that's external equity. You compare yourself with the industry. So, how to pay? Rewarding employees through variable pay program. Basis a, pro a portion of an employee's pay on some individual and or organizational measure of performance. So, your, your pay or your bonus will be based on your performance. If you performed well, you'll be given a higher pay or a higher bonus. But if you performed so-so, then so-so then yung bonus mo or pay mo. Next, uh, what are the variable pay programs? The first one is the piece rate pay. You get paid on a fixed sum of each unit of production completed. Okay. So I can uh, compare this to the people who make baskets, for example. No? So if they completed a basket, they will get, I don't know how much per basket, like say, say 10 pesos per basket. So, if they completed 100 baskets per day times 10, so they get 1,000 a day. So, that's piece rate pay. Merit-based pay, pay is based on individual performance appraisal ratings. Okay. So, for every year, they uh, appraise your performance. So, for example, 5 being the lowest and 1 being the highest. So, if they appraise you 1, uh, if they give you a rating of 1, uh, you can have an increase as high as 10% of your salary. So, if you're getting 60,000 times 10%, so they give you a 6,000 increase. So, next year, your base salary will already be 66,000. So, that's merit-based pay. Okay. Next, bonuses. Bonuses rewards employees for recent performance. So, let's say you did well. What are they going to do? They give you a bonus. Or for example, uh, you completed a project, they give you a bonus. Okay. Skill-based pay. Pay is based on skills acquired instead of job, title, or rank. It does not address the level of performance. So, how many skills do you know how to do? Uh, I'm computer literate, for example, I know how to make the payroll. Um, I can create a program, okay, based on the computer, I can improve, you know, your programs. I can also file the taxes, I can do uh, accounts payable, if more skills, the higher the pay. It doesn't depend on your job title. The problem with skill-based pay is sometimes 
uh, the person has a lot of skills, you hire a person who has a lot of skills, but you don't need all the skills of that person. So what happens is you're paying too much for a person. So that's the negative side of the skill-based Next one is the profit sharing plans. Organization wide programs that distribute compensation based on an established formula designed around profitability. So, if the company was profitable, then if you give a bonus, it will be based on the profit. So, mas mataas ang bonus. But if the company did not earn so well, then mas mababa yung makukuha nilang bonus. So, that is the profit sharing plan. Gain sharing, no? If you look at gain sharing, profit sharing, parang pareho lang siya. But no, profit sharing, it's based on the profit talaga. But gain sharing, it's based on what? The productivity. Okay. So, you share what you've gained because you have improved your productivity. If your team is productive, then you get a pay, a bonus. Next, sometimes uh, corporations give stocks. Okay, so this is what you call employee stock ownership plans or ESOPs. Plans which employees acquire stock often at below market prices. So if you're an employee of, let's say, SM, okay, you can buy their stocks at lower prices. When I was an employee of IBM, uh, there was a time when they gave us stocks, and that's for free. But we have to work there for five years or more. So if, if you don't finish the five years of work, then you don't get the stock. Okay. So these are bonuses okay, for working longer with a company or for giving them good performance. Okay. So, next one is using benefits to motivate. Of course, sino ba naman ang may ayaw ng benefits? Diba? You, you don't just work for your compensation, but you also work for benefits. Benefits are defined as indirect, non-cash or cash compensation paid to an employee above and beyond regular salary or wages. So, aside from your salary, you get your benefits. Example ng benefits. Okay, for example, you have a health insurance, okay, or you have a car, uh, a car, may pakoche, or um, you're given free gas, no, when you go to work, those are your benefits, or you're given a free phone uh, with, uh, with load or with a postpaid phone wherein they pay for your phone calls. So, those are benefits or there's a clothing allowance. So, those are benefits. Flexible benefits, individual rewards by allowing each employee to choose the compensation package that best satisfies his or her current situation. Bakit magiging flexible? Kasi not everyone wants a life insurance. Okay. So, for example, when I was still single, ayoko naman ng life insurance kasi kanino ko siya ibibigay no, when I die. So, I wanted something more like uh, travel benefits that I can travel whenever I like it. You know? So, as compared to the life insurance. But of course, when you get married, when you have children, you want life insurance. So, flexible benefit means you can choose kung ano yung gusto mong benefit na makuha. Hindi yung, ito yung benefit, ito lang yung makuha. So, flexible benefits, these are the types of flexible benefits or benefit plans. We have the modular plans, pre-designed packages or modules of benefits, each of which meets the needs of a specific group of employees. So, for example, a different plan for single people. Siguro yung mga single, they want more travel benefits, uh, health insurance for their parents, or uh, I don't know what single people now want. Nowadays. So, siguro yung they want the clothing allowance benefits and so on. Now, we have here the solo parents benefits. So, pag solo parents, they want uh, health insurance for their children. They want health insurance for their for, for themselves. Okay? 
and they want the security of their children, so probably they want a life insurance as well. Okay? Now, we have the married people. Married people who don't have children, so they also have different priorities. Or we also have the married people with children, so these are modular plans. Different plans for different groups of people. Core plus plans. Core plus plans consist of core essential benefits and a menu-like selection of others from which employees can select. So core plus plans meaning my core benefits. Core benefits lahat my health insurance. So pag nagkasakit, lahat yan. Okay. Pag na hospital, um, they can uh, get hospitalized and you pay for their hospitalization bill. So core plus. The plus is pipili sila dun sa ibang insurance. So, sila yung parang menu. No? Ito yung gusto ko, ito yung gusto ko. Then. So, my core, that's my PPD. Okay. Flexible spending plans. No, I did not define this one and I, I will not discuss since I think this is just a US-based type of benefit. I haven't encountered this plan here in the Philippines. Okay. Um, so, intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. Rewards are intrinsic in the form of employee recognition programs and extrinsic in the form of compensation systems. So, yung mga nauna, no, intrinsic, meaning uh, na, na, na you're motivated by your job no, because of recognition programs. Wala masyadong pera-pera involved. But if you say extrinsic compensation system, how much do they pay you? Ah, oh, kasi I get paid uh, 100000 a month. That's why... I like this job. So, that's an extrinsic compensation. Okay. Employee recognition programs. Recognition is the most powerful workplace motivator. Intrinsic yan. No? Namomotivate ka intrinsically. And the least expensive. But fairness is important. Least expensive kasi if we say recognition program, it's as simple as saying, uy, galing mo ngayon, ang galing mo talaga ha? natapos mo yan in uh, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan or na-close mo yung deal ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. so that is uh, least expensive kasi pinuri mo lang yung tao na motivate siya so mag-workshop ng mas maganda without any cost so it's least expensive okay. but it should be fair no? because sometimes um uh, may isip ng ibang tao, oh, he gets uh, recognized because sip -sip. Like that. So, sometimes, there's a connotation. So, it should be fair. When you give rewards. Okay, to summarize, to motivate employees, managers should recognize individual differences. So, katulad nung sinabi ko, we have flexible benefit plans. No? Iba yung gusto ng single na tao, iba yung gusto ng ibang tao. Nang married, iba rin yung gusto ng solo parent. Okay. Use goals and feedback. Of course. No? Uh, what's the goal of the company? What's the goal of the individual? And you give them feedback. Uh, parang, ang magaling ka, but, okay, so that they can improve. Next, allow employees to participate in decisions that affect them. Okay. Next, link rewards to performance and then if they perform well you give them rewards and then check the system for equity meaning there should be fairness hindi nila sasabihin na dahil may sipsip ay nabibigyan ng rewards okay so thank you for listening and that is all